Hello, my name is Elena G. Levine. I'm president of Quantum Success Solutions, and I am so excited to be here with you today to talk to you about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is the idea of how we can create our own unicorn career. Your unicorn career is a customized, specialized career that you create yourself. You do so out of joy and to honor yourself. That's a very important part of it. It is customized to your unique skills and abilities and expertise. It is specialized, specifically designed to give you the meaning and the impact that you wanna have in the world, in the galaxy and in the multiverse. It is about honoring and allowing us to express our full authentic self 100% of the time. I'll be talking more about that idea, but I want you to remember that if you want to design a career that makes sense for you, that allows you to solve problems that bring you intellectual joy, use skills that are like chocolate and cupcakes for your brain, you have to be a servant to your own authentic self. That is a key part. Your goal in life is to do projects, to solve problems, and to add value to communities that serve those communities, that allow you to have the most impact, the most meaning in your life, and to do things that actually are aligned with your own values and the way you view your mission and objectives in your career. This is not only a possibility, but it's a probability. We all can create a unicorn career for ourselves, even within traditionally existing structures, such as existing companies, universities, and research institutions, nonprofits, and other types of ecosystems and organizations around the world. The idea here to create a unicorn career that allows us to have the intellectual joy, that allows us to solve problems that bring us pleasure, and allows us to have meaning and impact that serves our authentic self and allows us to express ourselves in the most creative and productive way possible, is to always be looking for problems that you can solve and value you can add. Remember, the job search process, the job exploration process, is never about what you, the job seeker, can get from me, the decision maker. It's the exact opposite of that. It's about what you, the job seeker, the career planner, the unicorn career designer and strategic professional is doing to create opportunities to advance the community, to solve problems, to give rather than take. It's very, very important as we think about our career planning to always look for ways that we can actually make a difference and add value as opposed to taking. When you do that, when you adopt the spirit of generosity, you can create a career that meets your needs and it allows you not to have to sacrifice even a corner of who you are. This is something I learned the hard way and the long way. You see, here I am today, I'm a professional speaker, a corporate comedian, a science writer, I'm an event planner, I wrote a book called Networking for Nerds. I love to do many different types of projects and I've built my career and my business to allow me to do those things. But throughout my career, throughout my life, I knew that I was very interested in having meaning and impact in my life. I knew what my values were, but I always thought I would have to sacrifice a piece of me to be able to get a job, to be able to do a project, to be able to work with an employer or a collaborator. And I realized that's not the case. We never have to do that. Yes, we have to make money. We all have to have money to pay our rent, to pay for food. If you're like me, you have a substantial cupcake budget that you have to pay for as well. But there is still a way to generate income and be able to have meaning and to honor your authentic self. Throughout my life, I've had four threads that weave together to form Elena. I've always been interested in business. In fact, on the first day of kindergarten, when I was five years old, four years old, I brought a briefcase to that day. I was the top salesman, salesperson of magazine subscriptions in my choir in high school. I love selling, I love marketing, I love the concepts of distribution and manufacturing. I've also always loved communications. I love speaking, I love writing. I've been drawn to the stage. I've been on the stage since I was five years old. I've been involved in all manners of performing arts, including comedy, my entire life. And most interestingly, I've also always been passionate about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In fact, my degree is in mathematics, and I have another degree in anthropology. I love science. I love the concept of engineering and mathematics. I thought, as I planned out my career, that I would have to choose one of those threads as my career. 
and then design the others as hobbies. I would have to sacrifice a piece of me to build a career where I would be paid, where I could get income and I would still have meaning. And so I did, majored in mathematics and I figured all those other things would be hobbies. But what I began to realize with this was that that's not necessary. We can actually design a career if we are for if we are honest with ourselves and if we put in the forefront of our brain exactly what our goals are, what our values are, what's our mission to be on this planet, what is our, our desire, what do we love to do? If we are honest and clear with ourselves, we can create a unicorn career. And that's why I'm here today with you wearing exactly who I am, being exactly who I am, wearing sparkly eye, purple sh eyeshadow, because that's who I am. And I am, I believe me, I am grateful and I understand the significance that I was able to create a unicorn career for myself. But I'm not the only one. My good friend Brian Mallow is a science comedian. He has combined his love of science and comedy. He's worked as a comedian. He continues to build his business as a science communication trainer and an interviewer and a, and a writer and a presenter in the science and comedy space combined. I've interviewed a dancer, Merritt Moore, who has a PhD in quantum optics from Oxford University, who is a professional ballerina. She combines her love of physics and dance. I know a baker who has a background in chemical engineering. I know somebody who's worked in the race car industry as an engineer because he had such a great love of racing and engineering, and he was able to design a unicorn career that allowed him to solve the problems he wanted to solve and be his authentic self. This is the promise of being in, of pursuing your unicorn career. It's all about defining success for ourselves. In fact, one of the first fundamentals of designing and launching a career that is a unicorn career for ourselves is recognizing that only we get to define success for ourselves. That's an important part. Nobody else gets to do that. Then another fundamental is understanding that you have power and choice to pursue whatever career you choose to be. As long as you're not hurting anyone, you can help everyone. You can make an impact in the way that's meaningful to your heart, to your head, to your spirit, to your mind. This is part of building the idea of what is success for us. You have limitless potential because the reality is, is that your lived experiences, your diverse lived experiences, the skills you've gained, the knowledge you've attained, all the uh, networks that you have built and continue to build, all of that gives you extreme power in the career planning process. You can design a career that makes sense for you because there is limitless potential. That means that you have to have vision. I realized this idea about vision early on in my career because as I was graduating with my mathematics degree, I began to realize, you know what? I thought I was gonna become a professor of mathematics or work as a mathematician as a, in a research institution, but I realized that number one, I don't like to do mathematics research. And of course, that's important to know if you're gonna become a mathematical researcher. I don't like to do that. What I love to do, what I find just great joy and bliss in is communicating the importance and the value of mathematics and other STEM fields. So it was science communications, but I didn't have a name for it at that time. I went to my mathematics advisor and I said, Dr. Mathematics, Hey dude, I was super classy, so I didn't say hey dude, but for you, I gotta say hey dude. Hey dude, what else can I do with my mathematics degree? I've majored in the language of the universe. There must be other things besides being a mathematics professor or researcher. And my mathematics professor, Dr. Mathematics, turned to me and used the word nothing, the word nothing to describe my career prospects. How is that possible, ladies and gentlemen? In all of the history of the universe, and of course, as the universe continues to accelerate in, an ex in its expansion, and maybe one day it crunches in on itself, there has never been and never will be a job for a mathematics major. That's what my advisor was telling me. OMG, mic drop, how is that possible? You know and I know that's not possible. But this is where the vision comes in very handy. 
my mathematics advisor was like an ant in a two dimensional plane. He only knew what he was educated and trained in. So he didn't have perspective or access to other types of information, other data points that would help inform his advising of me to help me see that there were other many, many, many other jobs, limitless jobs for somebody who had studied mathematics, just like there was limitless jobs for somebody like yourself who's interested in X and Y who studied A and B. Like an ant in a two-dimensional plane, he only knew the tenure track as a mathematics professor. I had to have the vision. I had to be able to say, wait a second, as a third dimensional being, I can see connections. I can see bridges between different uh, fields, different ecosystems, different disciplines, different industries, and certainly different jobs. And I had to have strength and courage just like you to be able to move forward and say, wait a second, this doesn't sound right that there's only one type of job for a mathematics major. I'm going to look into other things. As I move forward in my career, I began to become what I encourage you to do, which is a career entrepreneur. A career entrepreneur is just like a business entrepreneur. They look for problems that have not been solved. They look for walls that are impeding innovation that they can help knock down. They look for pain points in systems they can help alleviate. And I was very mindful as I started my career in science communications to look for those gaps. It didn't come at first naturally, but I developed the skill set. You have to look for those gaps in systems. Where are the pain points? And once you identify those pain points and those gaps, you want to start thinking to yourself, is there a way that I can help alleviate those pain, those pain points? Is there a way that I can help knock down those walls and help innovate in new and novel, exciting ways? That's part of building a unicorn career. And that's what I noticed. In my particular case, I saw that for mathematical majors and graduate students in STEM fields, there was a significant lack of career education and curriculum. Nowhere in any abstract algebra class did I get any knowledge or advice or information about how to look for a job, plan a career, and be successful in that career. It wasn't discussed. I saw a pain point. I saw the pain point, and then I realized with my expertise in soft skills, which I had, and my love and my skill set of speaking and in presenting talks and using my comedy to engage audiences, I could fill the gap. I could solve a problem that would add value to a customer, to an employer, to a collaborator who would invest resources in me. That's what we do when we build a unicorn career. Unicorn careers, we have to identify where the problems are that have not been solved and ask ourselves, what can we do to solve that problem? How are we uniquely positioned to solve that problem? And you know how we do it? We do it via data collection. Very easy data collection, but it's ongoing throughout our lives. We start with data collection that is intrinsic to us. We download from our brain onto a piece of paper a chart that you can create for yourself, an inventory of all the different experiences you've had in your life. And an experience is simply something that gave you experience in solving problems and gaining skills. So it could be a job, an internship, a project in school. It could be something that you did in your community, in your religious organization. Any experience is valuable. I list out all the experiences and then I start thinking, downloading from my brain. Okay, what were the technical and what were the business skills I gained? What were the soft skills I gained? What were the attributes about myself that I noticed that I'm very detail oriented and I work well with a large team? And most importantly, what did I love, 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 love about that experience? This is empowering and invaluable data for you to have. Because if you know what skills you have, if you know what skills you love using, if you know what problems you have solved in all of these different experiences, you can then start thinking about the second set of data that you want to collect. And that's the extrinsic data where we're investigating the ecosystems where we would potentially thrive, the organizations where we could potentially add value, the collaborators, the partners, the people in the different communities around the world who would potentially want to hire us to solve a problem for them. This type of extrinsic data collection comes from networking. And remember, networking is not what can I take from you or how can I manipulate you uh, dishonorably into giving me a job or an opportunity. No, it's the exact opposite of that. 
Networking is about what can I give you? How can I add value? How can I move the agenda forward for your organization, project, and team? And if we think about networking that way, we recognize that networking is about building long-term, we're investing in a long-term relationship, long-term, mutually beneficial alliances where we're both providing value to each other. When you think of networking in this way, you gain access to a lot more data, data about pain points. And you can ask people, what are some of the challenges you're facing? What are some of the, the problems that you have really enjoyed solving in your career in this organization? How did you get into this career? How did you find your way? What skills have you especially appreciated when you started in the middle and as you move forward? What's the career path like? Ask probing questions so you can gather that data about the career paths, the ecosystems, and be visionary for yourself. If you have an idea that I love baking and I wanna use my expertise and my love of baking to share the idea of science and engineering mathematics with kids, you can create a baking company. You can start as a baker and start building a career where you're developing baked goods and, 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 uh, and baking items, confectionaries that maybe even have chemical equations on them or chemical images on them. That's what my uh, somebody that I interviewed had done. She was a chemical engineer who loved baking and shifted. She pivoted her career her, into a unicorn career for her that combined those two things. You have to have vision. The last part of designing and launching a unicorn career goes back to this concept of authenticity, that when we serve ourselves, our full selves, when we recognize what it is we love to do, what it is that drives us, how passionate we are about X and Y, even if X and Y seem disparate, seem like they cannot find a connection between them. When you do that, when you serve yourself in an authentic way, you are actually doing something very significant for your community. Because when you are your authentic self in a unicorn career, you are your most productive, your most creative, you're your happiest, you're joyous. You are providing value in a way that is optimal and you are doing the best that you can to change and improve your community. That is a very generous act. So it's interesting to me that when we serve ourselves by being our most authentic self and being honest with ourselves, that we wanna build a unicorn career that is unique to us that, that allows us to achieve our goals and solve the problems that bring us joy, we are serving ourselves, but we are actually serving our community. Because when you engage in this type of generous unicorn building creation, you are not only serving yourself, but you're serving everyone else. You are making a difference because you are your most productive. You are your most creative. And that is, I think, the magical and the most exciting thing about building a unicorn career for yourself. When you do the things that bring you joy, that bring you meaning, you make everybody's lives better. You serve all of us. And could, don't we all need assistance right now, especially? So here's to your unicorn career, your exciting, customized, unique career that you design for yourself with your bravery, with your strength, with your vision, and your talent, and your skills, and your abilities, and with your 100% authentic self. I look forward to seeing your purple sparkly eyeshadow when you launch your unicorn career.